Hello, in today's video, I'm going to discuss how you can apply transaction subprocesses in your next process model. Let's take a look at our pre-built model describing a tour operations process. We use Trisotech to demonstrate the transaction subprocess, or more importantly, the behaviors of the three types of end events. In the model, we depict how our process starts using the parallel gateway for instantiating the process. We depict two events, an intermediate timer event and an intermediate conditional event. The key to remember with parallel gateways that instantiate a process is that both events will occur at some point. In this instance, though, we will start a process when a client reservation occurs. The subprocess describes two activities. First, the evaluation of the reservation request, and then confirmation of the booking. From there, our sequence flow leads into an expanded transaction subprocess, process payment. To keep it simple, we depict the service task, process credit card information. Once the credit card is processed, the transaction subprocess ends, and our sequence flows connect to the joining parallel gateway. However, before we move on, Let's examine the transaction subprocess. The key to understand is the transaction subprocess is unique for BPMN in that it is a special behavior controlled by transaction protocols. Specifically, transaction protocols describe in detail the format of messages to ensure interoperability, security, and reliability for such communication. In this example, the service task process credit card information is actually communicating with an outside system. We can actually model and see how credit card information is processed with a credit card company. In order for the credit card to be processed, we must receive information from the participant, in this, the credit card company. We depict two possible exceptions when credit card information is being processed. The first exception, we use an intermediate error event placed on the activity, illustrating that the credit card was stolen. We then use an error event which throws to the intermediate error event placed on the boundary of the expanded transaction subprocess. In that instance, a serious error occurs and we use an exception flow to indicate that we notify the police. Let's run another process instance. To view the second way to end a transaction subprocess. This time we use an intermediate cancel event end to illustrate that the customer gave us bad credit card information. We place the intermediate cancel event on the boundary of the transaction subprocess. Here we are illustrating that the transaction could not be completed because the credit card information failed to process. This cancels the expanded subprocess. An exception flow leads us to notify the customer. In this example, let's run another process instance. In this example, we will examine when the credit card is successfully processed. We use an end event to illustrate the third way you can end a transaction subprocess. Once we confirm that the transaction was completed, the token flows out and our sequence flow connects to the parallel join. We now complete the second process path by triggering our daily intermediate timer event. The process can continue, and we conduct tours, and our process ends. Thank you again for joining us. Please leave a comment below and tell us what you think. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to hit the like button. And if you are interested in learning more about BPMN, please subscribe to our channel, as we have a wide range of videos that discuss how you can apply BPMN. Have a nice day.